After returning from the third level of Tristram's cathedral and heading into town, the tavern owner Ogden, looking befuddled, apprehensively approaches us, relaying a puzzling tale. Master, I have a strange experience to relate. I know that you have a great knowledge of those monstrosities that inhabit the labyrinth, and this is something that I cannot understand for the very life of me. I was awakened during the night by a scraping sound just outside of my tavern. When I looked out from my bedroom, I saw the shapes of small, demon-like creatures in the inn-yard. After a short time they ran off, but not before stealing the sign to my inn. I don't know why the demons would steal my sign, but leave my family in peace. Tis strange, no? Demons stealing a sign? But why? Surely that kind of petty theft is below even a demon and more in line with a bored youth. Still, we do not discount his story so quickly and begin to canvas the town for clues, starting with his barmaid, Jillian, standing in her grandmother's doorway, who says, Oh my, is that where the sign went? My grandmother and I must have slept right through the whole thing. Thank the light that those monsters didn't attack the inn. Thank the light indeed. To think children have been dragged into the labyrinth in the middle of the night, but a sign? Speaking of children, we spy Wirt, the peg-legged boy, a few paces from us, eavesdropping, and question. What? Is he saying I took that? I suppose that Griswold is on his side too. Look, I got over simple sign stealing months ago. You can't turn a profit on a piece of wood. Well, I actually wasn't thinking Wirt could hobble away in time, but he did just admit to pilfering signs but a few months back. Maybe his goal to whisk Jillian away from this accursed town has put him on the mostly straight and narrow path. Or maybe he got his grubby little fingers on that sign and we should shake a confession out of him. Holding back from a darker path, though Wirt does like to push us, we then see Pepin the Healer and ask if he saw anything and he exclaims, My goodness, demons running about the village at night, pillaging our homes, is nothing sacred? I hope that Ogden and Garda are all right. I suppose that they would come to see me if they were hurt. We're just glad everyone is okay. Mostly everyone. Maybe the wild card, Farnham the Drunk, has secretly had his eye on the sign for being locked out of the mead hall one too many times. It seems it's time for our toughest quest yet. Interrogate a sourced up Farnham. We lean down to his head height and feel a, a brewery-like waft hit us and whisper, tell us where the sign is, Farnham. You know what I think? Somebody took that sign. They're going to want lots of money for it. If I was Ogden, well, I'm not. But if I was, I'd just buy a new sign with some pretty drawing on it. Maybe a nice mug of ale Ooh, or a piece of cheese. Well, okay. Standing up, we reassess. Note to self. It wasn't Farnham. Second, buy some cheese and ale. Damn, Farnham really sells the dream there. Perhaps we need the grounded wisdom of the scholar Deckard Cain, who is just a few feet from the scene of the crime, but he too puzzles. I see that this strange behavior puzzles you as well. I would surmise that since many demons fear the light of the sun and believe that it holds great power, it may be that the rising sun depicted on the sign you speak of has led them to believe that it too holds some arcane powers. Hmm, perhaps they are not all as smart as we had feared. Really? So that's why demons only scurry about at night. And I thought it was their cowardice, but this makes perfect sense. That the light itself offends their senses, yet causes a twisted reverence for what they fear. We shall no doubt find out soon enough. Before we head out of town, we briskly speak to Griswold the blacksmith, who himself scoffs. Demons stole Ogden's sign, you say? That doesn't sound much like the atrocities I've heard of or seen. Demons are concerned with ripping out your heart, not your signpost. Look. Griswold, we're on the same page. Demons have slaughtered half the village recently, and sending a scout party for a sign sounds almost demented. Certainly absurd, but if there is anyone who may understand the inner workings of demons, it's Adria the Witch. 
and we head to her shack on the outskirts of town, and she comments. No mortal can truly understand the mind of the demon. Never let their erratic actions confuse you, as that too may be their plan. Wow, we are now officially more confused than ever, uncertain of anything, or if Adria isn't a demon cooking up a spell thanks to her little Freudian slip. Mentally, we mark her name down as a suspect just under words and head back into the labyrinth, still in quiet disbelief anybody could think it was a demon to source this errant sign. Down by level 4, we do happen across a curious sight, an overlord loitering by a structure that appears to lead to the catacombs below. And as we contend with the brute and its companion, a unique skeleton, Mad-Eye the Dead, as well as a hidden watching the commotion from the sidelines. But what is an overlord doing on this level? Wrestling with the thought and unopposed, we round the corner and see a lone Dark One leader named Snot Spill in front of a grate barring the entrance to the catacombs. Although the walls are bloody and he is armed, he doesn't attack us. And more astonishingly, he can speak. Hey, you that one that kill all. You get me magic banner or we attack. You no leave with life. You kill big uglies and give back magic. Go past corner and door, find uglies. You give, you go. It sounds like Cain was actually right, and they believe it was a magical artifact, worshipped for its sun properties. We decide to query the fallen once more, but he simply states, You kill uglies! Get banner! You pray to me, or else! Although a solo dark one isn't too much of a threat, we do want that banner back and clearly something much stronger safeguards the aforementioned treasure. If only Ogden were here to see this. On the northern side of the structure, we find an opening with a gaggle of overlords lying in wait. They do fit the description of Big Ugly and clearly they think they're sitting on a bountiful treasure with how vehemently they guard the room. Sure enough, the last of their kin stands guard by a chest that is no doubt their coveted treasure. We manage to bash his flabby frame in and open the chest which reveals Ogden's cumbersome sign. Making room to heft it back to town, we see the familiar rising sun intact and the bottom of the sign damaged as it's been haphazardly ripped from its resting place. However, we are confronted now with two very distinct choices to make. The first is to return the sign to Ogden. However, the amiable snot spell did encourage us threateningly to bring him his magic banner, which is actually possible. So, questionably, we throw our lot in with the Burning Hells and head back to the Dark One leader, where he excitedly exclaims, You give? Yes, good! Go now! We turn! We kill all with big magic! <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Snot Spill, mad with sign power, has a throng of dark ones lying in wait behind a false wall, which rush us as our reward. Spurred on by their newly acquired light-based vigor, but luckily for us, they still scatter in cowardice if their brethren fall in battle. So we slay Snot Spill, and the way to the catacombs is open to us. However, this will end the quest, and not really satisfactorily. We can't now surface the town and reveal to Ogden we tried throwing our lot in with the Dark Ones, which is probably for the best, but we also forgo a reward. So, if instead, when we get the sign, we don't see Snot Spill and return to Ogden in town, he says, Oh, we didn't have to bring back my sign, but I suppose that it does save me the expense of having another one made. Well, let me see. What could I give you as a fee for finding it? Hmm, what have we here? Oh yes, this cap was left in one of the rooms by a magician who stayed here some time ago. Perhaps it may be of some value to you. Although not much of a magician, the cap Harlequin's Crest is a formidable helm. Kane, the scholar, then reveals the cap does impart plus two to all attributes, armor class minus three, minus one damage from enemies, plus seven hit points, and plus seven mana. A strong contender for a mage, but you'd likely shatter like glass with a half decent hit. <laughs> it's not for a warrior, we think. And so we make our way back down to where Snot Spill stands and confront him, signless. Even without their totem in their possession, the wrath of Snot Spill and his minions does not wane. 
but their fate still remains the same. Not enough man. As they fall, our path is now clear and we finally make our way into the noxious catacombs below. That stench, is it me or are there zombies down here? <laughs> 